What's up, family? Welcome to another Sabbath School devotional. And I want to thank you so much for joining me today as we study the end of the flood. Let us start with a word of prayer. Loving Father, we thank you for giving us another opportunity to come to you on this day. Open our minds and hearts so that we can understand your holy words, so that we may share with the rest of the world also. And we ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Today, let us dive into the end of the flood. Let us read Genesis 7, 22 to 24. And it says, Everything on the dry land and those who nostril was the breath of life died. He blotted out every living thing that was on the face of the ground men and animals and creeping things and birds of the heavens they were blotted out from the earth only noah was left and those who were with him in the ark verse 24 and the waters prevailed on the earth for 150 days it was total annihilation and we can get a sense of hopelessness but it was at that time that God remembered Noah, which is found in Genesis 8, verse 1. But God remembered Noah and all the beasts and all the livestock that were with him in the ark. And God made a wind blow over the earth and the waters subsided. What does it mean that God remembers Noah? Here, the verb, remember, means that God had not forgotten. In the context of the flood, God remembered means that the water stopped. You can check that out in Genesis 8, 8 verse 2. And that Noah will soon be able to leave the ark. One interesting thing that I personally... I personally never thought about when it comes to the ark and the flood is the timing Noah chose to send the first raven. You see, we've been studying for the past few days about the flood and we spoke of how connected Noah was with God and how obedient Noah was to God, but Noah chose to open a window and send a raven on his own merits. See, the same God who gave Noah specific details about everything that had to do with the ark was still around. Noah was still well connected to God, but Noah took the initiative and sent first a raven and then a dove to test the situation. Finally, when the dove does not come back, he understands that the waters were dried up from the earth. And Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked. One thing we need to take account here is Noah's behavior. It is a rich and practical lesson. In one hand, it teaches us to trust God, even though he does not yet directly speak. On the other hand, faith does not deny the value of thinking and testing. Faith does not exclude the duty of, you know, the duty to think, to seek, and to see if what we learn is true. In short terms, it is foolishness to sit back and just say, I have faith. No, 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 no. That's foolishness. What we have to do is think and act. One big lesson to take away is, yes, Noah took the initiative to send the birds, but 
we need to understand that Noah stepped out of the ark only when God finally tells him to do so. No one knows that the flood water was gone because he tested it himself with the bird. Yet, he waited for God to give him the green light to step out. God commanded him when to go into the ark, which we studied a few days ago, and Noah waited for God to command him when to get out the ark. Brothers and sisters, let us aim to have faith in a direct connection with God in order for us to move when God says to move the same way like Noah did. Once again, I want to thank you so much for spending time with me today. I want everyone to please have a blessed day. I'm Daniel Noel, and I'll see you tomorrow as we study the covenants part one. Be blessed.